agenda. So uh, Greg Carbon is going to go first, and Josh Kastman is going to go at 12:30 Central Time. Um, had a, a little switch, and I want to introduce Greg, who's the branch chief of the Forecast Operations Branch at the Weather Prediction Center. Um, a real expert on, on winter weather, and very heavily involved with, with a variety of significant winter weather initiatives that are going on in the agency right now. Um, so, Greg, thanks very much for joining us today. I'm going to turn the screen uh, over to you, um, and we thank you for, for taking the time to present to us today. All right. Thank you, Randy, and good morning, everyone. Uh, let me go full screen here and make sure that you can see, see what I've got. Let's see here. Present. You see the screen? Yeah, it looks good, Greg. Great. Thanks a lot. And thanks for the last minute adjustment on the schedule. Um, sorry, I have to throw that out there, but I really appreciate the flexibility. And uh, thanks for everybody joining today. So this is uh, this is round two. I gave uh, the presentation last week uh, to the symposium. Uh, nothing has changed here, but I want to go over uh, the winter weather operations at WPC for this winter. Um, that storm in the background was last winter or the end of last winter, but a pretty significant cyclone across uh, north central U.S. Uh, last year, both the uh, snowfall from the uh, no risk analysis there and also the, uh, the satellite image of that uh, deep low as it moved up into the Dakotas. Um, we're got, as Randy mentioned, and Randy, you're the uh, you're an expert too. You work with the National uh, Service Program for Winter Weather, so um, we are very much engaged with the national program and all the WFOs uh, with regard to evolving the uh, the winter weather program and, and attempting to uh, develop products and services that provide uh, consistent uh, hazardous weather information, both winter and other. But today is going to be focused primarily on, on what we're doing in winter weather. So to start here, um, just a couple of the uh, topics that I'll be covering. Uh, most of the talk will be focused on probabilistic winter precipitation forecasts that emanate from WPC and are utilized uh, across the agency uh, as far as coming up with a, a view of worst case, uh, most likely scenarios for snow and ice. Uh, but I also want to talk about how those probabilistic forecasts feed into our collaboration and key message uh, thresholds. Um, something relatively new with respect to key messaging, uh, but something I think is uh, very important with respect to uh, a consistent message for hazardous weather. Uh, and then I'll touch on uh, some evolving concepts related to the PWPF. Um, Josh, later today, will talk uh, in detail about the WSSI and where we've taken that from the local development efforts in, in Burlington and, and Grand Rapids as well uh, to, to kind of a national scale uh, multifaceted product that still shows a lot of potential for growth. Uh, and then also, you know, just hit on uh, some of the capability that WPC has here uh, to do event reviews and also pretty robust uh, verification metrics to tell us how well or not well we're doing with respect to winter weather and how we can make adjustments uh, to the forecast. So starting with the probabilistic winter precipitation forecast, or PWPF for short, um, uh, about two years ago, I think we got the uh, official product into NDFD here for what we're calling the, the uh, winter, I think it's WWO, the winter weather outlook for days four to seven. And this is a rather uh, simplistic, uh, basic approach, but basically looking at where the uh, liquid uh, total of one quarter inch of precipitation in a 24 hour period would fall in the form of either snow or sleet, uh, and the probability of accumulating roughly three inches in 24 hours uh, out through day seven. Uh, this is generated on the medium range desk at WPC uh, and output uh, twice daily uh, from that desk in medium range. And again, probabilistic approach to basically um, accumulating snowfall over a 24 hour period. There was some uh, possibility that we would move this product, uh, we'd also add icing to this product, uh, but I think at this point in time, we're looking more toward what we're doing with the winter storm outlook and the WSSI, and perhaps moving those products out uh, into days four through seven, as opposed to modifying this existing product um, uh, into something that we're not doing in the short range. So ideally what I'd like to do going forward is merge what we're doing in the short range with what we're doing in the medium range. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a couple of slides. 
Um, so we're going to leave medium range behind here and focus primarily on days one to three. Uh, the probabilistic winter precip forecasts come out of this ensemble uh, that WPC runs and is maintained by uh, Bruce Wienheis here. Uh, these are the individual model members, uh, both time lag and global and high resolution that go into making up the 45-member ensemble. Uh, the WPC forecasters on the winter weather desk uh, come up with a deterministic forecast from that ensemble, and that serves as the mode of the ensemble distribution. So all the PWPF information uh, out of the winter weather ensemble in six hour intervals uh, comes out of this uh, basic process here. How do we apply that? Uh, back to the winter storm outlook. Uh, you probably heard that we're moving forward with this winter storm outlook concept. Uh, publicly experimental website uh, to start in December. Like we got somebody with an open mic. Um, try to talk over that, but the uh, winter storm outlook essentially using the base threshold uh, for 12 and 24 hour warning winter weather warning events, whether that be ice or snow, and then using the, the probabilities to determine what's the chance of meeting that warning threshold uh, out to days three, uh, three to three and a half. Um, and so there's a, in the lower left there, a picture of what the, the GFE grids look like uh, for the winter storm outlook, which is then distributed via ISC uh, for collaboration internally before the, the final outlook product will go up uh, experimentally on the website. And here's just an example of, of how the uh, winter storm outlook evolved for a recent event. This was the October, early October record snowfall event across parts of uh, North Dakota. And uh, out to day three, there were already relatively high probabilities, basically 30% or greater, or 30% across uh, central parts of North Dakota into north central South Dakota, uh, indicating the potential for meeting winter storm warning criteria uh, across that area based on the uh, ensemble forecasts uh, for snowfall. And at that point, there were watches uh, already up, and those watches became warnings in day two, and there was a subsequent increase in the uh, probability and confidence that you would meet winter storm warning criteria uh, over, over a 24-hour period there in the red, uh, primarily across North Dakota. Uh, watches are issued, and then you can see it at the day of the event, uh, how the watch area was shrunk pretty considerably, but very much uh, coincides with uh, with where the winter storm outlook had high probabilities of meeting the uh, I think it's eight inches in 24 hours here for uh, for a warning level event, and then the verification, and we also verify uh, in a you know. The, WSO is based on, on probability of meeting winter storm warning criteria, but what about the probability of meeting certain accumulation thresholds? So the images here in the thumbnails uh, to the right of the WSO basically showing uh, the probability of eight inches or greater of snowfall. Um, and we're, you know, the brown is basically where the no risk uh, snowfall was eight inches or greater. And you can see how those probabilities also increase commensurate as you approach the event, um, you know, the very high uh, likelihood of seeing an eight inch snowfall uh, by the time you get to day one. So there's this, in, there's this internal consistency between what we have in the PWPF, what we determine those thresholds are uh, for warning criteria uh, and the subsequent information uh, for decision making on whether you're going to issue a watch or a warning. Now, there has been a lot of discussion here about, well, you know, thresholds are great, but we're moving toward impact. I would argue that essentially what the winter storm outlook is, is very similar to what SPC does uh, with severe weather outlooks. So the weather service has determined that a one inch hailstone is a severe weather event. Uh, SPC issues probabilistic outlooks uh, with regard to the likelihood you'll see an event with a one inch uh, snow, a one inch hailstone. So essentially we're doing the same thing here with the thresholds that the weather service has determined are warning level events uh, for winter weather. I will talk a little more about how we can evolve this concept Concept, perhaps uh, to combine not just thresholds but impacts um, a little bit later in the in the talk here. So we've determined that the the, the winter storm watch warning uh, uh, time period here is is also uh, one in which we want to get on the same page. Um, so instead of having the the grandma's quilt on the uh, watch warning advisory graphic, we have uh, relatively 
smooth and consistent watches that are meteorologically uh, coherent as opposed to geographically um, incoherent. And so the idea here is that you get this product uh, that is meteorologically based and probabilistically based for watch warning decision making. Those watches are collaborated across the uh, the agency, and we get a relatively nice looking uh, watch warning advisory map. And not only that, we all get on the same page with respect to the the, the event, uh, its timing, and uh, potential impacts. And so we've determined that in certain probability thresholds and coverage, we're we're going to take a close look at the event and describe it in terms of key messaging. And uh, we have a variety of internal tools now that we're using in terms of how what's the highest probability within the winter storm outlook, how much coverage is there in that outlook by CWA and also by metro area. And we're using these thresholds to determine is this a big enough event to start to, you know, message this and, and get the get the message out uh, at the national level. Uh, these are some of the thresholds we're using uh, for collaboration and key messaging. Basically, a 50% uh, winter storm outlook over a large swath uh, or a lower probability uh, winter storm outlook that encompasses large metro areas. Um, we first started this thinking about this concept in cooperation with Eastern Region, uh, given the sensitivity to uh, snowstorms along the uh, East Coast, uh, but now expanded it uh, nationally. Uh, there are possibilities that we can go beyond day three if we've got a high confidence event in the winter weather outlook over at least one major metropolitan area with a two million or greater population. An example there is D, where, you know, pretty pretty high probability event several days out. Maybe we want to start to message this event with respect to its impacts and location and timing. Uh, so the, the WSO is kind of a foundational tool for us to begin to uh, message and have situational awareness for winter weather events. And the key message part of this, uh, in collaboration with the National Ops Center, uh, regional, regional Ops Centers, and, and the WFOs, uh, this concept's been tried successfully, uh, very popular with respect to tropical cyclones. Uh, basically, what, what are the impacts from these events? What, is, you know, what can we expect over the next few days? And on the left there, you can see an example from the Hurricane Center. On the right, a social media post uh, slide uh, from WPC regarding the snowstorm back in October. So some evolving concepts here with respect to the WSO. Uh, again, maybe we could move, uh, start moving uh, away or, or develop something in parallel with the threshold-based uh, product. Uh, looking at the winter storm severity index, we can apply an ensemble approach to that, perhaps providing uh, a, a confidence level with respect to major or extreme impact events based on the WSSI. And again, I'll plug Josh Kastman's talk later today on the Winter Storm Severity Index and how that incorporates a lot of variables and parameters with respect to uh, potential winter storm impacts, both for snow and ice. We also know that we need to go beyond day three with respect to the uh, concept of the winter storm outlook, um, providing specific guidance with respect to warning criteria events all the way out to day seven. The internal winter weather page does have a link to this uh, uh, page on the right here showing the uh, winter weather outlook pre-prototype uh, using ensemble information for snowfall thresholds and, uh, and ensemble uh, statistics uh, from, from WPC. So in summary, you know, we're going to take this concept with the winter storm outlook uh, live online uh, in December. Uh, it does fill a gap in the national scale hazard outlook suite. In other words, we have severe weather outlooks. We have tropical weather outlooks. Why don't we have a winter weather outlook uh, days one to three? Uh, we do hope that the concept will be an, a step toward improving uh, consistency, and not only in watch collaboration, uh, but in the in the messaging. It drives key messages, and we do know we need to extend this beyond day three, and also start to incorporate the actual impacts of these winter weather events in in a probabilistic framework. Quickly on event reviews and, and verification, uh, the loop on the left is just the, the snowfall, uh, weekly snowfall during October. Um, as Kelly mentioned at the beginning, it certainly didn't wait for the for the symposium here. It got underway early. Um, widespread snow across much of the uh, Rockies and, and 
and uh, upper Midwest and Northern Plains. And what's nice about this is uh, we could sum that up on the right there. You can see the October total no risk, uh, some daily snowfall. And we now have about seven years of relatively high resolution gridded snowfall data uh, for the nation. So I can take that image on the right and compare it to that seven year climatology and give you an idea of exactly how busy it has been with respect to the past seven years. Not a great time time series, but not a great sample size. But nonetheless, uh, uh, you know, a few years ago, we had nothing like this. And so it's really neat to see these uh, these values. And, and we know we were very busy, uh, but where was it? Uh, where was the snowfall above normal uh, with respect to this no-risk database that we have? So um, event reviews verification, part of what we do as well. So I think I've checked all the boxes here, PWPF, the key messaging concepts, the thresholds for collaboration, um, the event reviews, and, and the verification work. Um, it's an evolving concept. As I said, there's a lot going on here at WPC. Uh, we're here to you know, work with the rest of the agency and come up with the uh, single forecast for these single events. It's incredibly important that we're coherent and consistent in our messaging for these hazardous weather events. And uh, I think that that is our main objective uh, with, this, with this program. So if there are any questions, oh, real quick, just some acknowledgments here. Thanks to Randy and Kelly and Central Region for the invite. Always appreciate your feedback. WPC forecasters are in the trenches with the WFOs. They're available in chat. They're available for phone calls uh, whenever necessary. Please reach out and don't hesitate to, to get in touch. So with that, pass it back to you, Randy, and thanks again for, for allowing WPC to be part.